Hi folks, welcome to the Key Concepts Review for Chapter 7 of Math 521B, Pre-Calculus 11. In this video we're looking at absolute value expressions, absolute value functions, and piecewise notation. Standard disclaimers apply, and as always you can check the video description below for a downloadable copy of the notes. Absolute value expressions. The absolute value is just the bigness or magnitude of the number regardless of whether it's positive or negative. When evaluating an expression with absolute value brackets, simplify whatever's inside the brackets. When you remove the brackets, make your value positive. So just as a quick intro here, the absolute value of the number 2, written with these lines, these are absolute value brackets, is 2. The number 2 has a bigness of 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is also 2. So you can see it just changes whatever's inside the brackets into a positive value. Now they are brackets, so we do whatever's inside the brackets first. In this question, if we're asked to evaluate, well, inside these brackets, so here's our first set of absolute value brackets. I'm going to go 4 minus 12, so that's negative 8 minus 3 times the absolute value of negative 2 thirds. Now when I get rid of those absolute value brackets, that negative 8 turns into a positive 8. That negative 2 thirds turns into a positive 2 thirds. Let's work it through a little further. A quarter times 8 is 2. Uh, negative 3 times 2 thirds is 2. So this whole expression had a value of 0. Now the main part of our absolute value work is about absolute value functions, um, and then we'll look at the equations in the next video. The graph of the absolute value of f of x cannot have negative y values. That means it's always going to be a positive y value on it. So to sketch an absolute value function, we just sketch the original, and we make sure we carefully mark the x-intercepts and any vertices. If you've got a vertex, then you want to mark that, because that's going to be an important point when we in number 2, reflect any portion that's below the x-axis to above the x-axis. So let's start by just graphing a function, and then we'll graph its absolute value. So negative 2x plus 4, well, we know that that's a line with a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 2. Let's actually just do the table of values for it, though. If I put in 0 into this, I'll get 4. If I put in 1, I'll get negative 2 plus 4, that's 2. If I put in 2, that's negative 2 times 2 plus 4, or 0. If I put in 3, I'll have negative 6 plus 4, or negative 2, and so on. So there's the graph of y equals negative 2x plus 4. Now let's see what happens with its absolute value. All of these numbers in this column are going to be absolute valueified. So the absolute value of 4 is 4. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So the points we know are this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Ah, so our graph looks like this. It's a V. It's not a parabola, but a V. And the absolute value of a linear will typically look like a v. If you did it without the table of values, here's what we'd do. We'd just graph the original. And this whole section that I'm about to do in black, this part that's beneath the, the x-axis, will now just be reflected above. So the point here that was 3, negative 2, that's going to become the point 3, 2. This point that was 4, negative 4, well, it'll be reflected up here and turn into 4, 4. So we just draw the original one, and then we can flip a portion of it. Let's try that with a parabola. The graph of f of x is shown. Sketch the absolute value of f of x. So anything that's below the x-axis needs to be flipped above. These points, these x-intercepts, are very important. Now, let's take some points we actually know 
that are below the x-axis. So I know this point 1, negative 9. Where is it going to show up? When it's reflected up top, it will show up at 1, 9. Probably the most important point is this vertex at 2, negative 12. Well, when it gets reflected, it will get reflected up to here, 2, 12. And we have the point 3, not 3, negative 9. It will get reflected to 3, 9. So this first portion that's above the x-axis, nothing happens. Now things get bounced or reflected. And you can see that that's the mirror image of everything that's below the x-axis. And then it just goes back to acting normally. There's the absolute value function. So all we did was take any points that were below the x-axis and we flipped them above. X-intercepts are what's called invariant. And so is anything that's above the x-axis. So they're going to be places where it's the same both on the flip and the original or on the absolute value and the original. Okay, so let's do this if we're, we're just given an equation to graph its absolute value. So step one is just to graph the basic function. Negative 3 over 2, x plus 3. Okay, that's going to have a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 3 over 2. So from that, this point I go down, 3 and over 2. Down 3 over 2, down 3 over 2. Could do the same in the other direction. Now I'm just going to flip that over. And I'll pick at least one of these points uh, on the original to make sure I reflect properly. So 4, negative 3. That point is going to get flipped up and become 4, positive 3. And the absolute value graph that I'm going to put in red will just look like this. It bounces at that x-intercept, and there's our graph. Similarly, we might do it for a quadratic. So you can put this quadratic in uh, y equals form, or you can put it in factored form would probably be better. So first of all, we're going to graph this. And that factors to x minus 3, x minus 1, telling us that we have x-intercepts at 1 and 3. The vertex is going to be halfway in between those, so it's going to have an x value of 2. And its y value comes from just subbing 2 into the original function. So that would be 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3, ah, 2, negative 1. Now, if you prefer, you could have put this in vertex form, and it would have looked like this. y equals uh, x minus 2 all squared minus 1. But you'd still have to find the x-intercepts. So the basic parabola looks like this. I could do a table of values and get more accurate points. I know that it has a y-intercept of 3 because of this. So there's my y-intercept of 3. And now, we're just going to graph its absolute value. The most important point is this one right here. It's got coordinates of 2, negative 1. Flip it over, and it becomes 2, 1. And the absolute value graph looks the same up to here. And then it bounces up, and then it comes up again. So get a good graph of the original, and then bounce anything that's below the x-axis above the x-axis. Now, it turns out if we really didn't like the notation of absolute value, we could write each function in what's called piecewise form. And that means writing a different definition for the function depending on whether the absolute value sign is actually doing something. So if we go back here and look at, say, example A, for the first part of this graph, 
Absolute value is not doing anything. This graph is actually the same as the original right up until x is 2. And then what happens? It flips through the x-axis for the rest of it. So something happens here on this part. And what happens is that the whole equation turns negative. Its signs get completely flipped. And that's what's going on when x is greater than 2. So those two statements are equivalent to the absolute value statement. If we draw a portion of the line that's regular up until 2, and then the flip for x greater than 2, we should have the same as the absolute value function. So in this one, we're going to uh, graph negative 2x plus 6, and then write the equation in piecewise form. So I do my regular stuff. I'll graph the original equation. It's telling me go down 2 and over 1, 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 and so on. If I want to graph the absolute value, well, that's same, 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 bounce. In piecewise notation, here's what we'd call that. It's y equals the set of negative 2x plus 6 for x all the way up to 3. This is where the graph or the absolute value is doing nothing. And then the absolute value starts doing something. So we change all the signs in our equation. And that's what it does for all the rest of its domain, meaning x greater than 3. It changes to a 2x minus 6. Now, if you weren't sure, if I graph 2x minus 6, it looks like this. So it really does look like that second half of the red line. What I've got in blue and the original statement up here mean the exact same thing. Let's do one uh, that's a quadratic. So we're going to graph the original function. I'm putting it in factored form because that's going to let me know that I have x-intercepts at negative 2 and 4. That means I have a vertex at 1 something, and the something comes from subbing 1 into this, so that'll be 1 minus 2 minus 8, so that's negative 9. There we go. There's the original function. I also know it has a y-intercept at negative 8. Try and do this as smoothly as possible. There we go. There's the basic graph. Now we're just going to flip. So this looks the same. 1, negative 9 becomes 1, 9. The y-intercept of 8 gets flipped up as well. And then bounce again. So the question is, where is the absolute value actually doing something? Well, to begin with, it's not doing something on the first part. There was no bouncing happening there. So our piecewise notation could be, it is its regular thing wherever it was above the x-axis to begin with, wherever the absolute value is not doing anything. So that would be x is less than or equal to negative 2. And it's also over here, greater than or equal to 4. So those inequalities, those are just domains. 
it's going to be the opposite for the rest. So I just change all the signs in my function. Now it's negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. And that's for the middle portion from negative 2 up until 4. And the way that we write that is x is between negative 2 and 4. And it's always less than symbols. Now I don't have equals on those because I already included the equals uh, in the first part. You could do it either way, um, but make sure that you don't double count them. So that's the basics of being able to graph an absolute value equation and being able to write it in piecewise uh, notation. We'll take a look at absolute value equations in the next video.